Figma components help you keep your designs consistent and are a great way to save time when making changes across different screens. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create components and how to use them to save time when designing. Hi guys, my name is Chilli and I'm a senior UX UI product designer based in London. As you are designing, there are usually elements across your designs which are duplicated. And if you wanted to make any changes to them, it would take a lot of time to update. This is where components come in handy. What are components? Components are elements that you create to reuse across your design. They are used for creating design libraries. You create them once and reuse them over and over again. They help to create consistency in your designs and help you to design faster. They allow you to apply changes quickly across your entire designs, even across multiple files. This can be icons, buttons, or big sections of your designs. Let me show you how to get started. Let's start with a button. So most people will create a rectangle and then add a text on top. There is nothing wrong with this, but using a rectangle instead of auto layout doesn't allow for dynamic sizes as you change the text in the button. So if we had like a by, it's quite small, or, or if you had something like this, it doesn't expand with the text. So we're going to use auto layout, shift A. This has flexibility to grow and shrink with the text as long as it's on a hug on these settings. So we're going to give it a color. We're gonna have the outer spacing 20 and give it a bit of a rounded edges. Great, so now it means that if we had, it's more dynamic and grows and shrinks with the text. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's make this into a component. So click here. You now have a component, you can see it there. Let's make sure we name it properly. It's, it's called button. That is your component. If you want to use a copy of this within your designs, this will be called an instance. So you can duplicate it, Command D, or copy and paste, and you can see the difference here. This is one diamond as compared to four diamonds. Or you can search it in your assets here. So you just go button. There you go. When you make changes to the original button, it carries across to its instance. You can also make changes to an instance in the same way. You can change that, but that doesn't affect the original button. To restore it back to the original, you just right click and reset all changes. The changes you can make in an instance are very limited to these settings. So if you wanted to unlink it so that you can make more changes, you just detach it here but you can't reattach it. You just have to add a new instance. If you've used this across loads of different files and you want to find the original component, you just right click and then you go to main component and it sends you back to the original. And then you can go to that instance, wherever that was. So let me show you how I created this. This is the component. I just made this design. As you can see by these four little squares, it is a component. I did it by clicking here and turning it into a component and then duplicated it in here, changed the text and the images are changed by, you can just change the images in here like that. Because these are all linked, when I changed this design, it is duplicated. Now let's change the text to be black across all of these little tiles. Next, we're going to look at variants. So variants are a variation of the original buttons. We do this because you usually do need different types of button, like a hover state, secondary, and your tertiary buttons. Let's create some variants. Select the main component, and now you've got this plus button and it says add variant. There we go. In this one, we're going to make a hover state. Our hover state is 50%, right? And then we would like another variant. When you're here, you can just add another variant. Now we would like a secondary button. Add a stroke, there you go. And then a third type is just a link. Okay, those are your component variants as a group. These are a group of master components. So unlike instances, if I make changes to this, for example, maybe the size of this text, it will not affect the others. So why would we do this? What this means is that if you add one of these, you have the ability to switch, easily switch between the other ones. Make sure they are named properly. 
So rather than just variant four, you can just come in here and make sure that is named link. So you only wanna rename the part after the equal sign. So this will be second and this one will be, okay. So we go back to here and you can select them all. Great. You can also do this with other elements. So we've got a radio button here as a master component and a filled one as another master component. So they are not variants of each other, but we can create that. We can group them. So you just select them and then you combine them as variants. You can also rename things on this side. We want that to be called radio button. So this one should be selected. So what we can do now is we've just added some text and then we're gonna search the radio button. I think it's this one. When you're designing and you've got some text and you've put a radio button there, all you have to do is just select between the empty and the selected one. Next, we have component properties. These allow for more dynamic variants. So we've got four variations, but what if we wanted buttons with icons as well? One on this side or one on that side or one with icons on both sides. Also, what if we have hundreds of icons to choose from? We cannot create a component for each type of instance. And this is where component properties comes in place where you set rules that you can switch on and off. So we can put all the variations inside of one button and allow you to use switch things on and off and swap icons in and out. Let me show you how. So if we wanted some icons in here, we could go back into our asset arrows. Let's bring in an arrow on the left. Okay, we just need to make this. And then let's bring in an arrow on the right. Cool. And because of our auto layout, that resizes automatically. Let's change that color. As I mentioned before, these do not affect each other. They're just a group of master components. Um, so what you really want to do is make sure the first one you make is as extensive and as complex as you want it to be, and then copy that to it, rather than going back in and editing all the other variants. So now that we've added those two icons, we want an ability to be able to toggle them in here. I use command to select through the layers, so command and select, and now you've got the right arrow icon. Use this, create instance swap property, and then we want to name it icon right. Here you can have preferred values, so you can leave it as it is. This helps you to narrow down. If you have hundreds of icons in your components, you can use this to narrow it down so that these are shown as the top values. We can also search other icons. So download the shopping bag, check mark maybe, or you can just leave it as it is, it's okay. And then you create that property. That means if we go in here and we add this button in, here we've got icon right. There it is. And you can easily swap between all the other icons. Let's do the same to the icon left. So let's create a property. We're not gonna add all those other icons on this side. For now, we're just gonna leave it as it is. And as you can see in here, on the icon, you can only have an arrow and that's it. You don't have the same options as you have on this side. Okay, but then how do we switch it on and off? You could just go in the layers and just switch it off like that. That is an option, but let me show you how to do it within the properties. So we want to be able to switch the icon on and off. You go and select the icon. We want to be able to create this. So you go here on the properties icon and it says create a Boolean property. So you, you select that and we're going to name it icon right. And it's going to have a true or false which is show or hide, and then you create a property. And then we're gonna do the same on the left, here on the layers panel, select that, create a property, and we're just gonna call it icon left. I hope I named those correctly. I did not name it correct, I named it arrow right. There you go, you've got icon left, icon right. So here you will be able to switch these off, and switch these on again. As you can see, these are not in a good order. You wanna make sure that on and off is very close to these. So if you select 
the entire group, you can then start moving them around. So we've got icon right there and then we want this above it. That's then rearranged and then so if we go into our instance, there it is in the right order. So that means I can create a button that looks like this. And if you don't have any preset icons, you can still search and find things that are not preferred or libraries, there it is, and maybe put a check mark there. So if you then wanted to add those same changes to this, you can either do it manually onto each of these where you add the icons in here, or you can just start over and then change the properties of these ones. Now that I've started again, I need to rename these. That is not called variant two, that is hover. You can also change the name on this side is a link. So if we go into this one, now we can change it to hover and we can still do all those things that we were able to with the primary one. We can also change it to secondary in the same way and to a link. So now you're starting to see how you can build a design system. If you have found that useful, it really helps me out if you hit the like button. Thank you for watching and check out my other videos to help you become a pro at designing with Figma. Thank you.